What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sofia Santos and are you bound to get crazy over online classes? Well, an easy way to ease the pain is to get organized. From organizing your schedule down to your files, having a designated place for everything can make you feel more productive and more in control of what you're doing. So today in this video, I wanted to share with you guys how I get organized for online classes. <laughs> going to talk about is organizing your schedule. If you don't feel like you have enough time for your academics and yourself, you're probably not planning effectively. What has been working for me is planning based on urgency. For some reason, online classes have heavier workload than regular classes, so that means you just have to prioritize more. So that means the projects and tasks that have earlier deadlines and have a bigger percentage in your grade belong on the urgent pile, and everything else belong on the less urgent pile. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, giving your 100% in everything is great, but sometimes it seems impossible with the system that we have. So for the urgent pile, you give your 100%, and for the less urgent pile, you give your 90 99.99%. This is where you see the importance of knowing your grade computation. Through that, you know what to prioritize and what to give more effort on. Something that's also important is scheduling your break times or your rest times. If you don't include this on your schedule, you're probably gonna forget about it and end up with fatigue, making you less productive. And if you don't schedule it, you're prone to having break times that are way too long. Rest is important, and honestly, break times are productive if you plan it effectively. So this is what my schedule looks like. From 7 a.m. to 1 p.m., I take my online classes. If one of them finishes earlier, that means I have free time. And from 1 p.m. to 3 o'clock is my break time. And 3 o'clock onwards is my time for my response. Responsibilities. May they be academic or work-related or what responsibilities might be for you. When it comes to scheduling, consistency is super important because if you do it every day, it almost becomes like a muscle memory. Just like how you get hungry at the same time every day. Once I see that the clock is at 3 o'clock, I feel more productive. I feel like I have to work somehow. And then I just use that to my advantage and just do everything that I have to do. Everyone has different lives, so plan based on your own. But what I suggest is after your online classes, you take around one to two hours of break time and pick a time where you feel more productive and stick with it every day. The next thing I want to talk about is making a to-do list. So you can personally do this anywhere you want. It may be on your phone, on your laptop, but me, I do it on my bullet journal. I try to make this as minimal as I can just so it's easier to be consistent with it and it's easier to understand. So every month, I just have a monthly calendar where I put all of my deadlines. This is the closest I get to future planning on my bullet journal because everything else, I do it per day or per week. So this is what my weekly setup looks like. So over here on the side, I have a small calendar where I put all of my deadlines. And sometimes I also use this for journaling. And over here are my trackers. So the first one is my money and my YouTube. But on the bottom right here, I track my biggest projects. So I just pick whatever I want to focus on for the day. And sometimes big projects have mini tasks under it. So that's where I keep track of that. And over here at the side is my daily to-do list. So it's very simple. I use these symbols to do it. A check mark when it's done. I cross it out when I end up not doing it. And then this symbol when I move it on the next day. Sometimes I also use a sticky note. Now this one is for the task that doesn't necessarily have to be done on a certain day. And since I don't do a lot of future planning on my bullet journal, I also utilize Google Calendar and the calendar on my phone. These are for the plans that happen later on throughout the months. This way I get notified and it's less likely for me to forget about them. This is what my phone looks like. It has a date and then my most used apps and under that I have my calendar. This way I can see everything that I have for the day. Some things that I planned maybe a year before or a month before and under that I just have my favorite school related apps. Now let's talk about organizing your papers. For that I use this folder I got around a year ago 
from National Bookstore and I love it so much because it's cute ng color. Niya. This one has three pages, one, two, and a ziplock at the back. And each page has two flaps, the one in the front and the one in the back. So this one I don't really organize so strictly because I don't have a lot of printed materials for online classes. I just have my handwritten notes in the front, my readings at the back and just some miscellaneous stuff but I do know that a lot of students out there have printed modules so what I used to do with mine before was to organize it by subject by urgency and by categories of what I've already done and what I'm planning to do organizing your papers is really up to you there's so much things you can utilize like a folder a file case or simple sticky note tabs can be super useful when it comes to organizing digital notes, a lot of people prefer using Microsoft Word, but I personally like using Microsoft OneNote. It's very simple and it has easier navigation. So what I do is I have a notebook per SEM, a section per subject, and then a page per topic. That allows me to search and find whatever I need to study super quickly. And what I love about it is it also has an app. So if you want to insert the screenshots from your phone, it's very easy to do on OneNote. However, I really don't recommend it if you're planning to print out your notes. I personally rewrite my notes like these, but if I had to print them, I wouldn't use OneNote. Now let's talk about organizing your files. So I mainly use Google Drive for this and I try to update this maybe every two to three weeks. I also have files on my laptop, but it's a habit of mine that I keep downloading everything that's important to Google Drive and then I delete everything else that's not. That way, I keep my laptop super clean. So my system is very simple. I have a folder for my org, for my major subjects, and for my first year and second year subjects. Everything is compiled into these folders just so it's easier to find documents that I need. But what's really annoying about Google Drive sometimes is it's so hard to search for shared drives. So when I have links or Google Drive folders from my professors for me to pass my work on, I have a hard time looking for it. So what I do is I go to the link and then I add it to Stared. All you have to do is, is click the folder, go to the settings, and then click add to Stared. So that makes it super easy and it's also super efficient that it has an app. So if tamad kang mag organize ng files mo, doing it on the app is actually quite satisfying for some reason. So yeah. Another way you can easily access your files is using collections from Microsoft Edge. Now this one I mostly use for research but it has been super useful for me to access different files and folders as well from Google Drive because it's basically a favorite tab page but you get to organize it by section. So I have one for my academics so all of my Facebook pages, my Google Drive folders, my Blackboard account is compiled into one collection and I just have to go through it and I have easy access to everything. You can also add notes, which is super useful for researching. Now I have a compilation of all the websites I've been through and I can easily access them throughout every website at the side. And that's it for today's video. If you have any other organizing tips that you want to share, make sure to comment down below or just share them to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and maybe learned a little something. If you did, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I make videos like this every week as much as I can. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to me and support your girl. Thank you guys for reaching until the end. Bye! One, two, three! Fuck it!